can spot and stalk in any part of whitetail country, coast to coast, border to border. Now I know some of you, you kind of made up with your ground blind or tree stand. You really don't want to leave them alone out in the woods. You always want to be there, but there are times when you may want to abandon them and go to a spot and stalk hunt. You're watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This is where it all begins. best hunting day ever. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. You can spot and stalk in any part of whitetail country, coast to coast, border to border. How do you do it? Well, the first thing is buy a quality binocular. You gotta have quality, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time behind that binocular. Whether you're in dark woods, spotting and stalking down big canyons like over in Pennsylvania and stuff in the mountains, or out west like here where we're hunting whitetails or mule deer in the big openness, spend some money. Second thing is, get up high. Now, that's an obvious one, but you definitely need to be on different vantage points, high vantage points in your hunting area, so you can see down and around. Now, again, if you're hunting in the eastern woods, you can get up on a ridge and scan down into maybe an acorn, an oak bottom. Same thing in the Great Plains. Get up high on some grassy knob, scan down into a river bottom. And of course, out west, well, there's all kinds of options where to get up high. The third and final tactic that I would suggest for spot and stalk hunting, slow down. Any terrain, any environment can hide deer easily. Out in the east, you have different little nooks and coolies and draws as you're looking into these areas. In the Great Plains, deer can hide in CRP grass, tall grass, or maybe a little willow thicket right out in the middle of a field. And out west, well, there's all these little gullies and draws they can drop into. Sit down and spend some time picking apart each spot and then look at the best area and look at it again. Spot and stalk hunting. It can work anywhere for deer hunting, whitetails and mule deer, and you can adapt it. But definitely, if you have some of the terrain topography to work with, give it a try. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Cuddyback. Cuddy Link, 16 cameras, one cell plan, $10 per month. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Redneck Blinds. Now I know some of you, you kind of made up with your ground blind or tree stand. You really don't want to leave them alone out in the woods. You always want to be there. But there are times when you may want to abandon them and go to a spot and stalk hunt. What's the main time? Well, during the rut. If you're seeing some activity from your tree stand and it's a roundabout merry-go-round over in a certain section of woods 150 yards away and there's no way to shoot it with your shotgun, rifle, muzzleloader, or bow, 
What should you do? Get down out of that stand and stalk. Those deer are so preoccupied with breeding and lovemaking. The only one with a clear mind there is a doe. So keep your eyes on her. Try not to be spotted by any of them, but especially by her, and do your spot and stalk hunt. That's one time when you should just abandon tradition and get out of the tree or ground blind. Mark is hunting near his home in Wyoming. It's an annual hunt for him and one where his tag is good for either mule deer or whitetails. He's been scouting for weeks now and has been able to target a certain mature mule deer who has passed his prime. This buck has been following the same routine almost perfectly each day, but as many hunters can attest to, opening day is a whole new ball game. This deer here, my nickname for him, matched him perfectly. Well, it was Norm. Norm from Cheers, because he had that old beer gut, just like, well, a few of those characters from Cheers had. He wasn't huge by any means. It was not gonna be a Boone and Crockett scoring buck, but he was mature and he was old. And I really like hunting a mature deer if I can. I've got nothing against shooting a two, or three, or four year old deer putting it in the frying pan and enjoying a great hunt. Hey, that's all right with me. But if I can pit myself against an old timer like this, well, that's the one I'm gonna put on the list first that I wanna go after. So Hank was the buck we were gonna go after first. And that was my plan on opening morning. I got in there, found a prone place that I could lay down, set up my rifle, just like I wanted on my bipods and glass the mesa before me and two mesas off on either side of that plus part of the field in front of me it didn't take long for some deer to show up within an hour of setting up i was surrounded by at least a dozen mule deer doe and fawns now that can seem kind of exciting but it's also nerve-wracking because if they surround me and get downwind or actually see me they could blow my whole cover and guess what? Just a little after they showed up all surrounding me, off in the backdrop, what do you think I saw? Yeah, Norm. He was arriving at Cheers, and he wanted to get a place to sit down. Well, to bed. He actually stayed out on the horizon for quite a while feeding on neighboring ground. So he stayed in the backdrop, just grazing and watching, grazing and watching. And I mean, he was watchful. This deer, during my scouting trips, I observed him being as cagey and nervous and paranoid as any buck that I've ever went up against. He definitely wanted to make sure that nothing was going to jump him on his way to his bedroom. He was making his way towards me, just chugging along, eating, and then he slid out of sight into a gully, which fortunately was perfect. You wouldn't think losing sight of a buck would be perfect, but it was just then that those does, they caught a hint that something was up. They could see my form lying there in the sagebrush. Well, why could they? Well, they were within bow range. They were almost walking on top of me, surrounding me. Some went off to the right, some went to the left, some got high, some got low. Huh. Luckily, they all bunched up like a big old school of tuna and went around me and off into another gully, out of sight, out of mind but I still hadn't seen the buck. Where did he go? He dropped down into a gully, and I knew that gully well. It forked. If he took the one fork, he'd stay up on the neighbors. If he took the main fork, he'd come right at me. Hey, he came right at me. It may have looked like I had the shot, but I was just low enough prone. All I could see was his back line and his rack. What did he see? What did he sense? What sixth sense kicked in? 
About the same time, guess what I see walking uh, across the horizon? Another hunter. Now, I hunt properties just like you. I don't get them to hunt exclusively. I'm sharing them with other hunters. It makes hunting tough. It makes filming TV tough, but it does overall make me a better hunter. Keep that in mind as you go through hunting seasons. If you're sharing your property with other hunters, you've got to scout on how to find the deer and avoid that hunting competition all at the same time. Charlie and I are good friends. So. Are um, you Mr. Kaiser? I am. Oh, I'm really glad to meet you. I'm Ellen. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So After running into other hunters on the shared ground, Mark decided to pack it up for the day and try again the next morning. Since he figured he'd still have a good chance of catching Norm during his morning exercise, he chose a new position to sit, slightly to the west and elevated, and he covered it in cedar that evening. All that was left was to walk in the next morning and watch the sunrise. Luckily for Mark, Norm was right on time. That's him. See him? Okay. I'm going to shoot him as soon as I can. Don't. Careful, don't move. I've been watching this buck off and on for probably close to a week. We had an encounter with him yesterday and he got past us and down into a low spot and then he got boogered. The landowner was in here doing some ranch and stuff, which they always are. But he's been on a pattern to come through this same spot. But since he boogered the other day to a, coming through to a different spot, we switched up and he came through, but he's real cagey and cautious. I took a longer shot than I wanted to up on that ridge, mainly because there's some low spots here and he acted like he wasn't going to do his typical pattern. I thought he was going to duck out and get out onto another draw. It's been one of those mornings, one of those hunts. Let's go see what happened. I'm hoping I didn't miss that shot. I'm hoping we got a big mature buck down just over that hill. It's always good to have a cameraman along that's younger and has better eyes because I'm getting ready to track this deer right here. And David goes, oh, he's right there. Man, no matter how many years you hunt, and I, I have to do the math, but I've been doing this a long time. Not only is the excitement there, my heart was pounding right before the shot, that's a good sign as I'm still alive. Enough about me. Let's go see this. This is an old timer buck. You're not going to be surprised how big he is, but he's definitely an older buck that I've been watching for quite a while here. <laughs> oh, look at the body on this tank. Oh, he's got way more stuff than I thought he'd have. Mass. He's got a kicker up here on his G2. He's got two kickers and bladed up here. Nice forks. You know, like I said, 
I knew this buck wasn't gonna be a giant buck, big wide spread, but I could see in his overall body. Look at this neck. None of these other mule deer we're hunting have a neck like this. And look at this. Pot-bellied pigs, they are jealous of this pot belly right here. A big old head on him. Look at that Roman nose, broad skull, great mass. I am more than pleased with this buck, but what makes this buck so special to me is the fact that I put my time in scouting. I come out of the high country, I've been archery hunting elk, came down, been fighting some snow, high winds, got on this buck the first morning. I watched him through the spot and scope, and then for several consecutive days put the pattern together, and it was right here on this mesa that I figured I'd be able to put the ambush together. And that's exactly what we did. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Sever Broadheads, straight through it. Ten Point Crossbow Technologies, there is no substitute. And by Outdoor Edge, make the cut. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Matthews. If you're hunting open country, and that can be anywhere, any type of open pasture, open field, open everything like we're here, you're likely gonna wanna get low. And when you get low and start doing crawling on your hands and knees and eventually on your belly, you probably are gonna end up shooting prone. Now for me, shooting prone is a way of life. That's the way I love to shoot because I'm the most stable that way. But here's some tips you gotta keep in mind if you're gonna shoot prone. First of all, you wanna align your body. You want the rifle, the target, this part of your body where you're holding into all the way down your leg to be in alignment. You don't want to be skewed one way or other because that takes away your stability. The second thing you need to do is remember to keep your feet in the proper placement. Now you can either do what I'm doing, both feet flat, pointed out, or take your predominant, say you're right-handed, then take your right leg, bend it, and jam it into your left. Now what that does, either way, is to keep your chest up a little bit and it helps you control your breathing because you want to shoot without heaving or pressuring your chest. You want to be breathing regularly and squeeze that trigger when you're not heaving so bad. The third thing you want to do is keep this buttstock level. You don't want to be adjusting your head, so you want your face on the cheek piece, the buttstock level, and to do that, you can either shove your backpack in there, sometimes I do that if I got the backpack close, or take your off hand, like my left hand, and stick it in there and help adjust it. That keeps it level. Now I got my cheek in there. If I need to adjust, I can adjust real easily with the back butt stock. You don't want to be raising your head off there. And then breathe and squeeze. That's the way to shoot prone. Follow those steps and find them anywhere. I like the NRA website, the different positions, and you're gonna shoot a lot more accurately and your target will be hit solidly. That's what we're all here to do. Have a great hunt. You're busy, I'm busy, we're all busy. You're busy, I'm busy, we're all busy. We got jobs, careers, family, all kinds of work going on. So you don't want to be running around the country checking 17 different trail cameras, do you? Well, Cuddy Back, they've come up with a solution to that, the Cuddy Link. And what this system does, it's not cellular, it's actually a wireless system that meshes a whole bunch of cameras together on a property. Now you can take one camera, the mother unit, and set up another camera, and it'll send images to this mother unit up to a quarter mile away. Now that's fine, but you can take up to 15 cameras and link them all together. And then it daisy chains them and you can go on for miles. And all you gotta do is, well, check one camera, the Cuddy Link system. My biggest problem right now is finding the right tree to put it on. I found the right tree. Turn this unit on. 
hook it into position. Now, this is the mother unit. This unit here is the time saver because I've already set up several of my cameras on this whitetail property and they are in the best spots possible. I've got food plot cameras, I've got cameras watching mock scrapes, cameras watching rubs, cameras watching trails, and all of them are gonna begin transmitting data, images, to this one unit. I check this one unit and I'm checking a dozen other units spread across this entire property. So, when I wanna save time, I go to the Cuddy Line. It is a great time saver and allows me to monitor all the deer movement. When it's time to go deer hunting, I'm gonna have everything I need right here.